In just hours, President Obama will launch his latest weapon in the fight against income inequality, Promise Zones. The plan calls for a federal local government partnership, along with businesses, to offer tax incentives and grants to fight poverty. There will be five Promise Zones, Philadelphia, Southeastern Kentucky, San Antonio, Los Angeles, and Oklahoma's Choctaw Nation. Both political parties have made inequality a focus in 2014, but they've got very different ideas about how to accomplish fixing it, including what to do about an unemployment benefit extension and boosting the minimum wage. Joining me now, Democratic Senator Tom Harkin of Iowa. Always good to see you, Senator. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. You've been leading this effort to boost the minimum wage from the current $7.25 an hour to $10.10. Where does that stand right now? Well, we'll have it on the uh, Senate floor, uh, hopefully uh, in about two weeks, around the 1st of February, sometime like that. Right now, we're focused on increasing uh, uh, the, the unemployment uh, compensation for people out of work. We're focused on that right now. But uh, probably early February, we'll be on the minimum wage bill. And the fact and Chris, that John Boehner says this. he's opposed to raising it right now? I'm sorry? And the fact that John Boehner says he's opposed to raising it right now? Well, he says he's opposed to it, but uh, that can't stop us from moving ahead, at least on the Senate side, to try to address this huge inequality in the American workforce. Uh, people who are making the minimum wage, Chris, I'm telling you, they've, they've lost a third of their purchasing power just in the last 30 years. And you, people who go to work every day and they work hard, some of these people work hard all day, and yet they're living in poverty. That shouldn't be allowed in our country. And you mentioned the unemployment insurance and you got through the first vote, but what happens now? Well, we'll see what happens uh, today. Uh, we're gonna try to vote uh, to move ahead on the bill and we'll see if Republicans will support us in that. Uh, again, uh, I can't believe the intransigence of Republicans here, the harshness against people who have lost jobs through no fault of their own, who are actively looking for work, you have to do that in order to receive unemployment uh, payments, who paid into the system when they were working uh, into the insurance program, and yet Republicans want to pull the rug out from underneath them at a time when there are three job seekers for every job opening in America. Now is the time not to pull the rug out from underneath those people. Well, you know what their response is, Senator. They say, we don't want to pull the rug out from under them. We just want to pay for it. In fact, they've taken on this whole income inequality mantra. The New York Times has taken notice. Um, there's an article today titled, Two Parties Place Political Focus on Inequality. Here's a quote. Republicans are introducing a series of proposals to help more Americans rise out of poverty, attaching or reinstating work requirements to safety net programs, streamlining federal policies, improved training and education initiatives, and offering tax breaks to the needy. What do you make of that approach? Well, probably some of it's okay, some of it's not. They want to improve job training. I have a bill, the Workforce Investment Act, came out of my committee last year. We'll see if the Republicans will let us bring it on the floor of the Senate and move that bill. So far, we haven't had much luck with that. So they give lip service to it, but they're not doing anything. And secondly, uh, this idea that somehow we're going to pay for unemployment compensation by taking it out of some other pot that helps those very people. In other words, what, what uh, Senator McConnell wants to do is take it out of the Affordable Care Act and then pay for unemployment compensation. Well, these are the very people that are being helped by the Affordable Care Act today. So you just take it out of one pocket and you put it in the other pocket. That's not helping people at all. Well, you've been around for a while. I mean, what's your level of optimism that this is going to get done? Look, uh, Chris, we have to do what we can to make sure that our society is fair and just. We have to work on that every day. We can't let somebody's obstinacy stop us from doing that. Now, whether or not we can get the job done, I don't know, but we ought to try. And we have to try every day to meet the human needs of the people of this country. And we can't just say, well, we're not gonna do it because they say they don't want to. We've gotta try very hard to respond to these human needs. And before I let you go, I want to ask you about these reports that uh, you're close to a deal on funding the government, which uh, runs out of money Wednesday. House yeah. and Senate appropriations leaders are, are holding face-to-face -face talks right now. What can you tell us about how that's going? Slowly, uh, but we're working on it day and night. Uh, I know my staff, uh, my appropriation staff, are working day and night on this. Uh, every day we meet uh, to try to work out our differences. There are still some differences, but we're getting closer. 
and uh, hopefully we can get this done by next week. And that, that we'll have the appropriations bill on the floor, hopefully before we leave uh, a week from now. Senator Tom Harkin, always good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Chris.